Buju, welcome back to the show. <laughs> Are you just going to jump right into it? Yeah, I thought I'd just jump in. Who cares? <laughs> Buju, welcome to Buju Nana Buju, the podcast about Ojibwe language and culture. My name is Michael Lyons. Over here, we have the lovely and the talented Natasha. Ikadon Buju. Natasha. Buju, Gakita Awiya. Hello, everybody. And over here, we have the star of the show, Nana Buju. Ikadon Buju, Nana Buju. Okay, Buju, Gakita Awiya. Hello, everyone. And today, before we get started, guys, I was kind of thinking I wanted to talk about girls. Can <laughs> I talk about girls? Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, I was hoping. Natasha, do you think uh, you could do a special um, Auntie Natasha's Moment of Wisdom? Well, sure, I could do a Moment of Wisdom. What do you have in mind? I was wondering if you could talk about the, the stages of depression. And then uh, we could use some of the graphics from, uh, you know, Grief Relief or what you could talk about my book. Yeah, sure, I'll do that. All right. Coming up later in the show, Natasha is going to talk about overcoming depression, signs of depression, how to overcome it, that kind of stuff. A number of years ago, I did a, a series of comic books called uh, I Can't Talk About It. And one of the comics is, was called Grief Relief, and it talked about the stages of grief and identifying if, you know, what's going on when, when somebody passes away and you feel grief. And another one that was kind of controversial, actually, was called Suicidal Skunk. And Suicidal Skunk is about, um, it's actually just about depression and anxiety. But that term is very controversial. I'm, I'm not sure if you're supposed to say it on YouTube. But anyway, um, and then what was the other one? I think it was called Feelings. Oh, yeah, Feelings. <laughs> but uh, I did a number of kind of like mental health comic books that aren't, aren't meant to replace the conversation with an actual adult. But you could read the comic books together and then talk about the stuff. Or I don't know, who cares? But the reason why I kind of got into it was that over the course of a number of years, throughout, you know, whatever, I've had to deal with depression and grief, um, you know, mental health crises. I've experienced the dark night of the soul, <laughs> you know, an ego death. Oh, man. Yeah. It hasn't been easy. And I know there's a lot of you out there who've gone through it too. So, um, grief can take a number of, grief can come on from a number of different things. You know, obviously when, when a person dies, when your grandmother dies, you have grief. But you can have grief of, a pet dying, that can be even harder. Yeah, no kidding, huh? And uh, there's also a grief that people go through when a relationship, when you break up with somebody. Well, that's what happened to me. I've only broken up with one person in my life. Where I was the guy, I mean, I've been dumped a couple of times, but... Um, I've only had to break up with somebody once. And her name was Natasha too. Yeah, I know. So here's a song I wrote about this girl. Let's see if I have a picture of her. I think I do. I drew a picture of, of, here we go. Natasha. Many years ago, I fell in love with this 
young girl from Bangladesh. And we had a very brief, very intense relationship. And during that same time, she went home for the summer. My grandfather died and I experienced grief for his death. And something happened when she came back after the summer break. I wasn't in love anymore. But I had, I had, I had made a lot of promises, <laughs> you know. Um, and there was one, one, one point in our relationship before she went away. We were lying in bed and I took a Sharpie and I wrote on the wall, Michael loves Natasha. And, uh, when she came back, I had to, I had to tell her that I didn't mean it. I meant it. That's what that, that's why she never understood. It's like, I did mean it. And actually I did love her, but I didn't want to be in a relationship anymore. And I couldn't, I had lost that loving feeling. Oh, you lost that love and feeling. Whoa, that love. Anyway, <laughs> but still, even though I was the guy who broke up with her, I felt all kinds of grief after, uh, we broke up or after I dumped her. So I wrote this song called Natasha. Miigwech ga bizendawieg. Thank you for listening. my job just the other day and like everybody else well I've got a mountain of bills that need to be paid and I lost my way now I don't know which way to go but the wind may blow in the grass may Never man one word I never man one word I never man one word I said I never man one word I never man one word I never man one word I said Now you're my one you're my only regret I never man
used to sit up at night Just so I could watch ya I wrote on my bedroom wall Michael loves Natasha I never meant one word I never meant one word Thank you for listening. All right. So then, the other woman in my life, um, how do I describe Jennifer? Jennifer was probably the only real relationship I ever had. You know, um, I mean, I guess I know I, I had a real relationship in high school with Karen. Oh, yeah. I mean, she was my first love. I, I, I had a traditional high school 80s relationship, you know, going to movies and dinner and making out in the car and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. But um, but Jennifer was my first and probably really only just dated it we, we dated for over three years and uh you know we, we, we said i love you we planned on getting married we, that whole talk um you know we, we were a college couple we were both going to college or she went to college and i i took classes and dropped in and out of college over the years but um you know she was a uh she went to the private school that was close to my public school and she was friends with my older brother when i when i moved out to moorhead I mean, she wasn't even friends with him but you know i met i met him her through my brother went to concordia and we hooked up and then stayed together for three years. Uh, she wasn't a very good girlfriend. <laughs> what? Why not? Well, you know, she cheated on me and she was... I, I got to, I mean, she was a great girlfriend in that I learned everything about what I don't want or didn't want in life. <laughs> you know, we, we were a classic, uh, you know couple but she was a uh i don't know at the time i thought of her as i mean i was in love 
but the dynamic was that she was always a little too good for me. No, really? Yeah. She was a rich girl. I was poor. Now that I'm old, it's like, no, she was a college girl who was living on her parents' money. And I was a working class guy paying my own rent. But I always felt kind of outclassed, like, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, there was a weird dynamic all the time. But, you know, I was, I was addicted. I was, I was in love. Even, even after she cheated on me, we didn't break up. She didn't actually dump me. She just did it. And I, and I took it. <laughs> really? Yeah. But eventually, she graduated from college, went off to grad school, moved away. And we were still not broken up. She didn't really even have enough respect for me to break up. She was like, yeah, well, I'm going to grad school. See you later. And then we'd talk on the phone and stuff. So she went down there in the fall. And by Thanksgiving, she goes, well, why don't you come on down for Thanksgiving? You know, because we're a couple. We hadn't really de decided what was, but I had no intention of moving to Indiana or wherever she was living. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to go down there and I'm going to break up with her. Because that's the, uh, you know, the noble thing that we were together for three years. Well, the stupid thing is, we, I planned to be there for three days. And I went down there thinking I would break up with her. But then I realized, well, you can't break up with her on the first night, <laughs> you know, because that's going to be a pretty awkward next two days and i had next to no money i didn't know if she would get mad at me for breaking up with her kick me out of the house and i'd be homeless and uh where did she live south bend indiana indiana so i go down there and we you know it's back on we're a loving couple i didn't know if she had a, another boyfriend at the time so the first night you know we sleep together and next day we have Thanksgiving. The final day I'm going to go back to the train station. I realized I hadn't broken up with her yet. I was like, doggone it. I wanted to break up with her when I was down here, but I missed my opportunity. And we get on the train or I get on the train. She drives me there and I turn around and I look at her and she's crying and smiling. That's sad, whatever. We say I love you and goodbye. And I sit down and I go, doggone, I didn't do it. Well, I don't know what's going to happen. One thing I know for sure is I'm never coming back here again. And I wrote this song. Sad parting, farewell kiss 
in this morning's mist What's mine is yours, but what's yours is his So I'm never coming back in again I'm never coming back in again This is it now, this is the end I'm never coming back in again Oh, oh, oh And well, I guess that's enough to be said about that. <laughs> hey everybody, thank you so much for listening. Miigwech, Gabiz, and Dawieg. And thank you for watching. Buju Nana Buju, the podcast about Ojibwe language and culture. My name is Michael Lyons. This is Natasha. Bonjour! I mean, miigwech! Kakira awiya! Thank you, everybody! <laughs> no. And nana bonjour! Okay, miigwech! And I will see you again. Kigawaba min. Minowa. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing. Don't go away, I'm begging you to stay, cause I'm gonna miss your love. <laughs> Please don't go. Oh really, why? Because I'm gonna miss your love. The minute you, you walk, walk out that door. door. But I gotta go to work, honey. No, I'm gonna miss your love the minute you walk out that door. <laughs> hey everybody okay, hey. won't you consider becoming a patron patron that's not, no that's not right I, um, patron yeah i can't even say it <laughs> please become a patron saint and support buju nana buju the podcast about ojibwe language and culture Click the links in the description to our Patreon page. And if you become a $25 a month Buju Crew member, it's an exclusive club. <laughs> it's going to cost you some junia, some no. money. <laughs> no. uh, you'll get a, a cup, a coffee cup. Oh. You can put your black medicine water in there. Makade bash kiki wabu. Makade bash kiki. See, you're already learning it, Jibway. Buju crew members get $25 a month and we'll send you a Makade bash kiki wabu cup. A coffee cup with our pictures on it. And, uh, or just check out our Patreon page. You don't have to sign up. You can see some of these Lydia, some of these videos. This one's backstage of the show. There's Michael and Nana Bushu. My mouth wide open. This one's called How's the Historical Trauma Today? <laughs> okay, let's just <laughs> check this out. <laughs> yeah, I need to get my coffee. Yeah.
呢？嘟嘟嘟嘟嘟嘟嘟嘟嘟嘟嘟嘟嘟嘟嘟嘟嘟。So, um, yeah. Good morning, Mino Giga Jabe. Today is a jib boy phrase of the day. Mino Giga Jabe. Let's see. <laughs> Michael. <laughs> A rock star cartoonist. Well, I think you get the picture. Um, yeah. Come on over to our Patreon page. I don't know what else to say. Miigwechka, Biz and Thank you for listening, and I will see you again. Giga wa min. Minoa. Oh.